Hello everybody and welcome back to another video as today we're going to be doing another episode of reviewing NHL teams offseason so far as today we got the Montreal Canadiens as uh, I'm really not a big fan of this offseason uh, for the Montreal Canadiens first of all drafting uh, you know the the big drama queen there in Logan Maliux who said that he did not want to be drafted uh, as we're going to be definitely going to get, be getting into that a little bit in today's episode and you know making the big move for Dvorak, losing Kalk and Anami, uh, picking up Savard because they lost Shea Weber. Uh, lots of things that we're going to have to dissect with this rough, rough off season here for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. But before I do, I'd like to just say if you are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. So, Let's get into this offseason here for the Montreal Canadiens because we got lots of drama to cover. We got lots of crap to cover with this team. Um, and honestly, I'm not a big fan uh, of this Canadiens offseason. Uh, you know, I, I really am not. Uh, I don't think, you know, they really improved that much. Um, you know, picking up Hoffman when you lost to Tar, I think you lost out on that. Hoffman is, um, you know, decent power play guy, but 5-on-5, five five, man, he is not really that good. He is not good 5-on-5-wise. Five five um, and then, of course, getting Dvorak basically to replace Deno and Kalkinanami, which is just not good. Um, I mean, Kalkinanami wasn't going to fit there in Montreal anyways. It just looked like that. Um, of course, it was another third round or third overall pick wasted once again. Uh, but Dvorak, I know it's like right now for some Canadians fans, it's like going to be a savior of the team which Dvorak I'm sorry he's going to be a decent two-way guy for the team but it's nowhere near on the level of a Philip to know he's a good you know second third line forward but that is really it for Dvorak uh so we're actually let's get right into this trade right off the get-go let's talk about Chris and Dvorak and that trade because that was really the only trade that they did and they traded a 2022 conditional first round pick and a second round pick there in 2024 uh for Dvorak and you know I don't think this was really worth it for Dvorak. Of course, they traded, of course, whatever pick is going to be the best between Montreal or Carolina's pick. Um, and now, if it ends up being a top 10 pick, the, then Montreal will instead transfer to Arizona, the worst of Montreal slash Carolina's 2022. So basically, if one of the picks ended up being a top 10 pick, it gets transferred over to one of the worst picks. But if they're both top 10 picks, then it gets transferred over to the worst. So not a bad condition here. So if Montreal ends up being a bad team, which most likely they might, and they might be getting a lottery pick, that means it might be transferred over to Carolina, which is nice. You know, that means they might not lose a top 10 pick in this situation which is not bad so the condition on this trade is not bad it, it makes the trade look like it's not the worst trade in the world but for this team I think in, in that stage I would have started rebuilding and you know I'm not an NHL GM sure I'm just an armchair GM but I think in this situation with the with the way that the team looked at that time I would have just started rebuilding right without a, a second line centerman and now you got Dvorak but is he really going to be that guy like he's another guy that is goal scoring which I guess we'll take a look at his analytics now I like to just say uh, shout out to Jay Fresh his link will be down in the description below for these great analytics make sure to go check him out for his Patreon uh, and also go check out his Twitter uh, it's Jay Fresh Hockey on Twitter uh, he posts some analytic cards on there as well and he does does tons of analytic uh, deep reads and do it as well so um here's Christian Dvorak's analytics and it's okay you know it is all right I'm excited to see how well he'll do in uh, in Montreal but it's all right it's not bad but it's all right you know um he puts up some good offensive numbers his defensive numbers are not you know terrible but his offensive numbers are something to be questionable about right his finishing you know his finishing ability is going up but how well will he do in Montreal? And, you know, his assistant goals are definitely not the highest in the world. This year, he didn't do that bad, 31 points. But his career high is only 38 points. And that's not, you know, fantastic, to say the least. And not, not saying this year, he had a decent year there for, you know, the Arizona Coyotes. But... You know, losing out on a young player like a Kalk and Anami sucks because of the fact that Kalk and Anami did have that potential to be even better than what Christian Dvorak is right now, and it just did not pan out in Montreal. But I feel like this deal is all right, but it's definitely not the greatest deal in the world because in this moment of time, I would have just started rebuilding. You know, you already had two first-round picks. You could have started bolstering up on a lot more, 
but it is what it is. The Montreal Canadiens will never stop trying to win that cup. And especially since they made it to the Stanley Cup final this year, they will truly believe that they make it could make it back into the playoffs, which in this tough Atlantic division, it's going to be very, very hard for a team like Montreal to even make it into the playoffs. Now, let's jump into the draft, which I'm really not a big fan of their draft, and I really don't want to stay on this because I talked about it in my podcast a while ago when this uh, Logan Malix K got drafted. Um, honestly, um, this was not my most favorite move in the world on, on what they did. The kid said that he didn't want to get selected. Now, the reason why he said that he didn't want to get selected was because he shared image of... Uh, a sexually implicit video of him getting something done to him, and he shared it. Now, I I'm going to say this. I have seen it before as a hockey guy myself. I have seen other people do it, and it's not very nice. It, it is a thing that should not be allowed, and it's actually quite illegal. It it's not a thing that you should be doing, and the thing that he did was very wrong of him, and it's very messed up. Um, it's, it's the same thing as the Mitchell Miller situation. Um, this one is still very fucked up sorry for my language but i have to put that in emphasis that it's a really messed up situation i don't want to go super deep into it but this draft and selecting him was not very good i know he could end up being a very good defenseman but he said he wanted to get skipped on this year and wanted to learn from his lessons so let him learn drafting the kid is not letting him learn from his lessons you know it's not teaching him anything that you know People can still do messed up stuff and still get drafted in this draft. And that's not what we're trying to teach kids that are coming up in the pipeline right now. Because I know a lot of people that have done this uh, this type of stuff where they've uh, uh, shared sexually implicit images before. It's, it's messed up. It shouldn't happen. And this shouldn't have even been a selection for the Montreal Canadiens, to be completely honest for you. So I'm honestly just going to give them a big fat F. Plus, they drafted Trudeau. So big fat F there. <laughs> um, anyways... Uh, except for the draft, you know, it was a, kind of a rough draft there for the Montreal Canadiens. Definitely wasn't the most beautiful thing in the world. And we'll move now on to their free agent signings, which they lost a pretty good amount. This year, they lost a pretty good amount. They lost Philip Deneau, which is a big loss for them. They also lost Tatar, which was also another big loss, even though people will say, oh, he didn't play in the playoffs, so he can't be that good. He, he's a good he's a good player, and I, I'm a very excited for the New Jersey Devils to have him because he's a very good player. And replacing him with Mike Hoffman, not a very good move there for the Montreal Canadiens. And then they also lost to Spiri Kaka and Nami. Uh, they did get a first-round pick, which was nice, but it still sucks to lose a former third-round over or a third overall pick, and especially with, you know, the way that Spiri Kaka and Nami was. He, he started off great and just wasn't the great greatest player in the past two seasons maybe they rushed him into the nhl rush his development which could have possibly been the case so i'm excited to see how well he'll do there in carolina but it sucks to lose you spiri cock and anami and then replace him with the vorak and, and that's just kind of the thing here with the canadians it's just bad replacements after bad replacements right mike hoffman for 4.5 for the next three years he wasn't a very good player there in st louis and he is just a kind of a player that you know he might bring along some drama. You, sure, he did good there in Florida, but, you know, the past few years, he's been kind of on a downtrend. His analytics don't support him very much. Not just that. You could take a look at his, just his base stats, and it's going down. You could watch his game, and his 5-on-5 five -five play isn't very good anymore. The reason why he did very good there in Florida was because their power play there with Huberto and Barkov was very solid. But this, the fact of the matter is, he's just not the greatest 5-on-5 five -five player in the world when Tatar was a better 5-on-5 five -five player than Mike Hoffman. And also then also picking up David Savard because of the fact that Shea Weber, because of the extent of the injuries that he got during the playoffs, will not be able to play. And they signed David Savard for the next four years at $3.5 million, which, which was just way too long for David Savard. A player who is already on the downtrend. Uh, his de offensive analytics have kind of you went down. His defense is still very good. He's still a great defensive defenseman without a doubt, but he is going downhill. And usually by this time, around the 30 years of age, defensive defensemen seem to kind of downtrend down too. Sometimes, not saying always, but sometimes. And with David Savard, there is a potential of him going on that decline as well. And, you know, it's not a bad contract. 3.5 for the next four years is not a bad contract, but four years is a bit too long for term. It would have been a lot better if it was maybe two, maybe three years at the most. 
but I feel like it was a little bit too long on the term. Lunkinen, nice sign there with a, a one-year, $2.3 million deal. Not a buy sign in there for Lunkinen. Uh, and then otherwise, Armia uh, signed to a four-year, th $3.4 million deal. I thought this was a bit of an overpayment for uh, uh, Yul Armia. Uh, it was a bit of an overpayment. He's a good player. Defensively, he's not terrible. Offensively, he's mid. But I felt like it was a bit of an overpayment, especially for four years at 3.4. A bit of an overpayment. And it seems just this offseason was not the greatest offseason for Bergevin. And it seems to be, for me, every season talking about the Montreal Canadiens, I say this team needs to rebuild. It, this is a team that just dies of a rebuild. And they do these rebuilds that are half-assed. I know you got Caulfield and Nick Suzuki jumping in or you know, going to be playing full-time this year, which news, uh, Nick Suzuki did this past season. But... Are they going to be able to carry this team to the playoffs? Will that first lineup to Foley, Suzuki, and Caulfield be able to do that? And will Caulfield or Hoffman, Dvorak, and Gallagher play very good? Gallagher hasn't, you know, been super healthy this past season. And how well will he be healthy this upcoming season? You know, the past two years, he's been very injury riddled. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. So that's also another big thing there for the Montreal Canadiens. Can Gallagher stay healthy going to the next season? And this depth... It's not looking very pretty for the Montreal Canadiens. If Duran maybe comes back and he plays really good, this guy could be, you know, a player that is a big a, a big player for the Montreal Canadiens moving forward. But the depth is not the most beautiful part of this team. And I'm just not a big fan of the Montreal Canadiens. I really am not. Savard was an ideal, but, you know, signing him for four years was a bit long. Hoffman is horrible five-on-five five wise. Dvorak, you know, there's a lot of big questions with him, he's not a bad player. He was probably one of the better pickups throughout this offseason for the Montreal Canadiens. But this team needs a dire rebuild, man. It really does. Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki is not going to be enough of it. And this defensive core, you know, Joel Edmondson, Petrie, Ben Schrott, David Savard, man alive. This feels like I'm watching a 90s defensive team, and I don't think it's going to work going forward in this Atlantic division when you have to deal with the Boston Bruins, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and also the Florida Panthers, and then also deal with the very stacked Metro Divi division when there's basically going to be no wild card opportunities. And can carry, uh, carry Price, you know, carry what he did into the playoffs, what he did in the playoffs into the regular season? A lot of what they did in the playoffs was because of Carey Price. Carey Price was red, red hot during the playoffs. And he was a big factor why they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals was because of the fact he did so hot. Now, how well will he do in the regular season? He hasn't been the greatest goalie during the regular season. So that carries a big question as well. Uh, and honestly, I'm just not a big fan of their offseason. Uh, I think there was some decent moves. You know, the Dvorak one wasn't the worst, but that's really it. I think I'm going to give them a C-. minus. Honestly, there's not a lot of pauses to talk about here with the Montreal Canadiens in their offseason. Uh, like, I, I'm always going to probably say every offseason, this team needs a dire rebuild really, really badly. Um, just to just get rid of a lot of these bad contracts that they have on the team and to stop trying to be a playoff team when they really are not a playoff team and they won't be for a little bit i know they made it to the stanley cup finals this year but i feel like they're going to do the exact same thing as what the dallas stars did this uh past season um where they were great in the playoffs, but then they just had a lot of injuries that stacked up over that past playoffs, and they just weren't the greatest team last year. You know, they had some players that jumped up decently in the uh, lineup, like Jason Robertson and stuff like that, but they just weren't a playoff team last year, and I feel like that's just how it's going to be for the Montreal Canadiens. I don't think they're going to be a playoff team this year, especially with the, 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 the Atlantic division that they're now back in. It's going to be a rough season for the Montreal Canadiens, I feel. Uh, the top six, if a lot of things go right, if Hoffman plays really good, if Gallagher is healthy all season long, it could be a very good season for the Montreal Canadiens. That top six could work out, but that there's going to have to be a lot of things that go right for the Montreal Canadiens. And I just I just don't know with losing to No, to Tar, Shea Weber, there's a lot of big losses here for the Canadiens. And I, I just, I don't got a lot of confidence moving forward here with the Canadiens. So I'm giving them a C minus. Tell me guys in the comment section below how you guys thought of the Montreal Canadiens off season. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.